This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at the iPhone 5S. Yes, another year, another iPhone or two. In fact, we have the iPhone 5S and the iPhone 5C coming out this year. This time we're going to look at the flagship S and see how it does. So here it is, the iPhone 5S, the latest and greatest from Apple. Is it their best iPhone yet? I'll get cut to the chase and tell you right now, yes it is. Is it better than every phone on the market? That's for you to decide. Obviously, a lot, a lot of people really enjoy their iPhones, and if you're into the iPhone ecosystem and experience, definitely this is the phone for you. If you're trying to decide between this and Android, we'll have some smackdowns between some top Android phones and the iPhone 5S to help you decide. Certainly when it comes to the feature race, the iPhone is still pretty conservative. Apple is known for their innovation, but really they take existing technologies and they perfect them and they make them very marketable and very usable. For example, the fingerprint scanner that's on the front here, the fingerprint ID system. We've seen that in the Motorola Atrix. Certainly we've seen that on a lot of laptops, Windows laptops over the years. It's nothing new, is it? But Apple makes it so seamless and easy to use that, well it starts to seem revolutionary to folks. So say I want to turn it on. I can just press here or I can use the button up top. Rest my finger here because I've scanned that finger just like that. So what's the big deal? You know, I would love to keep my phone passworded at all times, but let's face it, you're on the go all the time. You need to unlock your phone and just use it. You don't want to sit there and futz with a pin or a pattern unlock. It's discouraging. So it, rather than keeping your data secure, you just say, okay, forget that. I'm not going to even bother. Well, this way, it's so easy and it's so reliable that you're just likely really to actually use it, which is a good thing because we all carry a lot of personal data in here, family photos, goodness only knows what else, maybe even some business stuff. You don't want to be sharing that with folks. To take a look at it, you know, it looks just like the iPhone 5, doesn't it? The colors have changed a little bit. This is the space gray model, which replaces the black model functionally. Black face, obviously, right here. The back, instead of being black, metal is, well, gray, just like they say, space gray. Still the black glass bars, top and bottom over here, same size. In fact, cases will work for the iPhone 5 on the iPhone 5S, as long as the cutout is big enough to accommodate the updated camera and the new True Tone, as they call it, or it's really a two-tone flash. We have an amber and a white LED flash on the back here for better color balance when you're using the flash. Volume buttons are still over here, still beautiful machine metal. The chamfering around the edges is a little bit more pronounced. The power button is still up top right there. We have our nano SIM card slot right there. There's always poke a little tool right in there to open it up and to get to the card. Speaker here, looks like a speaker there. It's not though, still a mono speaker. There's our lightning port and there's the headphone jack. So there it is. Also available in white, which is really white glass here, white on the back and in a light silver. It's pretty much like the last generation white in that way. And the much talked about gold because that's the new color. And you know, a lot of folks said gold, including me. Oh wow, that's just like so 80s. But in person, I can tell you I've seen it. It's actually very attractive, and it's very subtle. It really is kind of like champagne. Where the white model is just a light silver here, there's just a hint of champagne-y color on the champagne model. So you can see here we have two boxes. Just so you can see what the packaging is like, we have, looks just pretty much like the same iPhone box that we know and love. And inside, when you open it up, there's the usual tray, the usual guide. You get a set of earbuds, you get your charger and your lightning cable, which I've taken out so I can actually charge this to do our review. Notably different from the new iPhone 5C packaging, which looks a lot like iPod Touch, doesn't it? So you get the idea right there. This one's $100 less, and they're doing a little bit less frou-frou on the packaging. Have no fear, we're also going to have a review of the iPhone 5C coming up soon. So what's stayed the same here? I think most of you have read up on this and know, but we still have the same 4-inch Retina display with 326 PPI pixel density, 500 nits of brightness, 800 to 1 contrast ratio. As ever, a gorgeous, bright, colorful display. Good viewing angles from the side. No, they didn't make it larger. I wish they had too. I would really love to have a 4.5-inch iPhone, wouldn't you? Some of you probably out there would anyway. At least the option to choose between something bigger and something about standard size, maybe next generation for the iPhone 6. Alas, right now we're still looking at the same 1136 by 640 resolution display, sharp as ever, but not too huge. 
Inside, slightly increased battery capacity. We're up to 1570 milliamp per hour, and battery life hasn't been much of an issue with the iPhone 5, so it's always nice to get a little bit more battery life. We're still doing tests on this guy. So far, it seems to last just as long as our iPhone 5, which is a good thing, because iPhone 5 battery life is quite good. That is to say, I can make it through the day with moderate to heavy use on a charge. Obviously, the battery is sealed on, inside on iPhones. There's no opening this up to pop in a spare battery, so you're going to have to rely on external USB battery packs, just like you do on other smartphones these days that have integrated batteries. Camera up front here, improved eyesight. Camera has larger pixel sensors, still 1.2 megapixel sensor nominally, but bigger sensor makes for better exposure in low light, and that really makes a difference. You know how many dark, grainy FaceTime chats have you had or Skype chats? It is noticeably better. On the back, still 8 megapixel, but again, larger sensor size. They're doing something like HTC did. Now, they didn't go with as large pixel size for the sensor, but still, I, I think it's a good balance, and I actually prefer this a little bit to what HTC did, because when HTC cut it down to only 4 megapixels in terms of resolution, for those of us who need higher quality photos for more professional use or for bigger pictures on larger monitors or displays, 4 megapixels a little mm, weak. 8 megapixels just about right. Are the pictures better with this? Yes, they are. Camera application also gets some no features, and we're not going to go over every single feature of iOS 7 because we have a separate walkthrough for that, including covering some of the camera features, but in the 5S here, you can see some things that you didn't see with our iPhone 5. Obviously, the UI has changed a little bit. There's our HDR on-off toggle, our flash control on-off auto. Swapping the cameras is right there. There's our shutter button. There's our access to our gallery. Here are the live filters, sort of Instagram-y things, different color effects. You get the idea. Tap there again to make it go away. Now, aha, uh -huh, we'll turn it this way so you can see a little bit better. But notice over here on our little drag slider, we have slow-mo. You can do 720p, 120 frame per second video, and it's kind of neat. It starts out normal, ends up normal, just so you get that little bit of a transition effect, and you can actually do pretty slow, slow-mo video, only at 720p. HD, full HD recording at 1080p is still at 30 frames per second. I wish they had given us 60 frames also, but for some reason, Apple didn't choose to do that. Certainly, the hardware should be capable of doing that. Standard photo, we have the new square photo mode, we have panorama mode, and also you've got burst mode. All you have to do is press and hold on the shutter and it will take burst mode photos and let you choose the ones that you like best. Or you can try to choose for you, but I like to choose for myself. So how about photo quality? Here is a picture I took of our mostly dark but some, some parts white cat, which is a pretty challenging photo actually for most cameras to take because there's an awful lot of contrast there. Usually either the white gets whited out or the rest of the cat's too dark. And this was taken in an almost dark room, very cloudy, rainy day, no lights on in the room. And there's a tremendous amount of detail right there. It's just amazing how you can see the stripes in his fur. The whites are not too whited out a bit on the flank. And we have this cute little face right there. So you can see all the fur on the crest over here. Really, really very impressive. Nice outdoor shot here on a somewhat prettier, nicer day. Lots of detail. If we zoom in right there, you can see all the leaves on the tree, but not too artificially sharpened. Colors are pretty balanced and nice. Detail on the water, also good. Indoor shot. One taken with and one without HDR. In this case, honestly, they both look quite good of an antique Gibson guitar. Also, just poor lighting. Detail and the reflections looks natural. So honestly, I think one of the biggest improvements for this for everyday usability for folks is going to be the camera. The iPhone 5 had one of the better cameras on the market, even if 8 megapixels doesn't impress you in terms of numbers. This has gotten that much better. And the flash also does create more natural tones, so you don't get something that either looks for fluorescently pale or overly yellow. Awesome, awesome camera on this. In terms of wireless radios in here, Apple has just a couple of different models of iPhones, but they have an amazing number of wireless radios inside of each of the models right now. So you're looking at many, many LTE bands supported by the phone. Uh, the unlocked version is not available right now. It's supposed to be coming very soon. The 5C, you can get the unlocked version right away, but the version that we have here should work for AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon all in one unit. That's pretty interesting. Sprint gets a separate SKU, and that one is pretty similar to the unlocked version. Only the Sprint version is locked. 
For those of you who are buying this and hope to unlock it, probably T-Mobile is going to be your best bet if you're not going to wait to buy the unlocked version direct from Apple because T-Mobile has gone contractless, which is pretty nice. If, you want, if you're willing to pay full retail for the phone, you can, and then after 40 days or so, they should unlock the phone for you. The other wireless internals in this phone are the same, same antenna band design here, Wi-Fi 802.11bgn, no AC. Kind of surprised, a couple of phones like the Samsung Galaxy S4, the HTC One, the Moto X, they have AC now, so just to keep up with the Joneses, thought that Apple was going to throw that in, but they didn't. Bluetooth 4.0 in here, and the usual GPS with GLONASS and Maps that thankfully has improved over the past year and is now quite usable. In terms of speed, well, it certainly feels fast. Did you have any complaints about the old iPhone 5 if you're a user? Probably not, because that was very fast. This has a whole new processor architecture inside. It's the Apple A7 CPU going in here. As far as we know, this is still 1.3 gigahertz, but it's a very fast dual core, and the benchmarks are very impressive. It holds up well against the LG G2 running a quad-core Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 CPU clocked at 2.26 gigahertz. So uh, Apple's architecture color me very impressed. Got a gig of DDR3 RAM in here, and yes, it's a 64-bit architecture now. That really doesn't mean a whole lot to you now. The biggest motivator to use 64-bit really is so it can address more memory, but obviously Apple's operating system doesn't require a whole lot of memory, so well, there it is. But they'll be able to address 4 gigs when the need arrives to do that. I think when we we'll really start to appreciate the CPU improvements are when we see the 5th generation iPad, because well, with that super duper resolution on the iPad and, and the quality of the games that we've seen there, there is a real use for super fast CPU. But for synthetic benchmarks, Sun Spider Driver Script Test 422, that's as fast as we see on a Windows PC. Usually, when you're around 1000, you're doing really, really good in smartphone land. That includes the iPhone 5 and today's highly competitive smartphones, the HTC One again. Moto X, even though that's a dual core, it's still a very fast phone, the Samsung Galaxy S4, and of course the LG G2. So while those score anywhere from around 820 up to 1100, 422. So that means that your web pages, they just render like that. And we'll go to visit our own website over here, which is not cached, so you can see just how fast it is. And you can see the new modern keyboard here, which is just a lighter color. Functionally, it's really the same. Really, that wasn't cash. That's how fast that was loading our website. It's just, it's phenomenal. The, the, the speed is just amazing. Switching portrait to landscape, no problem. You can see the new style navigation widgets that we have down here, which take us a little getting used to if you're used to the old iPhone, but you'll get the hang of it, no problem whatsoever. Let's test out some HTML video playback, HTML5, and we're going to check out our Moto X video review. And this is over AT&T's LTE 4G network, by the way. Again, we do not have Wi-Fi turned on at the moment. Automatically full screens. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're looking at the Moto X. Finally, available first on AT&T in the United States. Looks beautiful. States. Looks very, very nice and sharp. 16 gig version, 249 for the 30. And as ever for a mono speaker, it does an okay job firing from this little speaker down here. Our Geekbench 3 score. This is a cross-platform benchmark. Scores are very impressive. The single core test is 1363. The multi core, which is dual core in this case, 2402. To give you an example in comparison, again, the LG G2, right now the fastest smartphone in Android land with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 800, scored 852 for a single core and 2137 for multi core. So the iPhone is actually besting it. Wow. If we want to compare it with dual core land, Geekbench 3 on the Moto X was 677 for single core and 1261 for multi core. So, you know, you can make fun of Apple's CPU or their clock speed as much as you want, but sorry, it, it just ain't going to hang because this, this devil is real fast. As ever, available at 16, 32, or 64 gigs of internal storage starting at 199 with contract for those carriers that offer 
contracts. T-Mobile, the uncarrier, of course, has payment plans, or you can pay full retail. And each storage increment goes up another $100. And for those of you who are paying full retail, that's $649, $749, and very painful, $849. Uh, no, Apple hasn't come out with a 128 gig iPhone yet. God only knows how much it would cost if they did, of course, then again. I'll go over the UI very quickly in iOS 7 for those of you who haven't watched the walkthrough and absolutely refuse to do so. Obviously, the big change here is going to be our icons, very flat, very modern, very well. It's up to you if you like them or not. Notifications up here, all sorts of nice pull-down notifications. Pull up to get to your control center over here, and you can control your wireless radios, your brightness, your playback volume and controls here. Flashlight mode, alarm clock, so on quick access to the camera. So definite improvements makes it a little bit more on par with Android for making things easier to reach. Well, whoever thought I'd have to say that, huh? Double tap and we have the WebOS style multitasking. This is a huge, huge improvement over what Apple had before in the way of multitasking. That was such a kludge. So say I want to get rid of something, just swipe it right up there. Easy enough to use. Very nice. If you're going to take the best part of WebOS, go ahead and take the best part. Certainly multitasking has to be my favorite part of the lovely web OS. For settings, we have our notification and control center over here so you can control the information and whether or not it shows it all on your lock screen, always handy to have. And we also have our security settings for the fingerprint scanning. I'll show you that really quick. I've obviously scanned in one finger already. And I'll show you how easy it is to add another. So here we go to passcode and fingerprint. It's going to have me enter my PIN first before any changes are made, which is just how we want it to be done. So you can see I have it set whether or not I want to require a passcode immediately. Fingerprints. Say I want to add another fingerprint. And you can also set up whether or not you can use this to purchase stuff from the iTunes library. Now I'm going to add a fingerprint right now. So it's telling me to press and put my finger on there. And you see as I do it, it's filling in the red lines. And when it's had enough of it, gotten the data it needs, it's going to tell me. And now it wants me to do it at a weird angle, like I might be holding the phone like that. A little off kilter because we don't always hold our fingers perfectly. And continue. So now I've enrolled a second fingerprint. Pretty easy, right? Well, that's the iPhone 5S. Again, available now, though you may have trouble finding one in stock. Is it Apple's best iPhone ever? Easy to say. Sure it is. Every iPhone does improve. Is it still relevant in today's world where there are so many fine Android smartphones, even Windows phones? You've got things like the Nokia Lumia 1020 with a 41 megapixel camera. Yes, I think it is still relevant, not just because there's a lot of people who enjoy the operating system and experience, and that is very important. Don't underestimate that. If you really love the way your iPhone works, the way iTunes works, you know, a faster CPU normally or a higher megapixel camera is not going to change that experience for you, honestly, in most cases. But if you're pretty tired of this experience, you, you really weren't that fond of it, you still would like to be able to customize it even more than it, you can do right now, which is to say not so much, but at least we get our notifications and our controls down here, then certainly it's worth looking at other phones because the huge divide that we used to see between Android and iOS, well, it, it's, it's not there anymore. You can get a very fast and fluid phone either way that you want with iOS or Android. They're both good. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review, and don't forget to hit that like button.